When we are lacking, God fills us with everything. Amen. Amen. Father, thank you so much, God, for the day, Lord. Thank you so much for your word. And thank you so much, God, for your presence in the midst of us, God. As you have said, Lord, two or three gathered in your name, you are in the midst of us, God. And thank you, Father, for such wonderful promise, God. Lord, Father, right now I ask you, God, in Jesus' mighty name, O oh God, Lord, that you fill our hearts, O God, with your precious words and help us to understand it and help us, O God, Lord, to know and to see the truth, O God, Lord. And in that truth, O God, that lives will be changed, O God, lives will be transformed, O God. For it is you, O God, Lord, when you had said that when we lifted you up, you will draw all men to you, O God. Glory to your name, O God, and glory to your words. Thank you so much, we pray in Jesus' my name. Amen. Amen. Okay, please, um, turn your Bible with me in John chapter 4, verse 1, 1 to 26. It's a long context, but it is full of wonderful story, wonderful truth, and wonderful Glory of God. Amen? Amen. So, therefore, when the Lord knew that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, please read the Bible with me. <laughs> Though Jesus himself did not baptize but with his disciples, he left Judea and departed again to Galilee, but he needed to go through Samaria. So he came to a city of Samaria which is called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now, Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being weary from his journey, sat thus by the well, and it was about the sixth hour. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away to the city to buy food. Then the woman of Samaria said to him, How is it that you, being a Jew, ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. Yes. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where do you get the living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as well as his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered and said to her, Whoever drinks of the water, this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into an everlasting life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water that I may not thirst, nor come here to draw. And Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband, and come here. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You have well said, I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one whom you know have is not your husband, is that you spoke truly. The woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worship on this mountain, and you, Jesus, that Jerusalem is in the place where one ought to worship. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We know what we worship. Vation is of the Jews. But the hour is coming, and now is when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Amen. For the Father is seeking such to worship Him. God is a spirit, and who, those who worship Him must worship Him in a spirit and in truth. The woman said to Him, I know that Messiah is coming. 
voice called Christ, when he comes, he will tell us all things. Jesus said to her, I am he. I will speak to you and he. Amen? Amen. Okay. So, in this story, we have a Samaritan woman, Jesus, and the rendezvous at the well. No? So, we know that the Samaritan, okay, what, what, how do you know? What are the Samaritan? Why they were called Samaritan? You know, we know in the, in the, in the, in the history, the Samaritans, were, they were called half Jew. Yeah. You know, half breed. Because the Israelites, when they go to Samaria, they have intermarriage to, to Samar, Samaria, Samaritan. You know, which is God forbid at the time. You know why? Because God doesn't want them to be uh, compromise their faith. You know, having uh, yoked together with the uh, with these unbelievers, you know, with the unbelievers, they will soon later on be one of them, right? So they were despised by the pure Jewish people. No, to them, the Jewish are the one they are they know whom they worship but the samaritan they consider to be like a paganism no <clears throat> okay so what can we know about this samaritan woman Samar samaritan woman first and foremost as we have read she is poor i think she is poor because she came to draw water by herself you know in jewish tradition it is the young women you know who are drawing water but I don't think she's no longer young. But the fact that she's no longer young, at the same time, she is the one who is drawing the water, that means she has no hard serpents. Okay? Mm -hmm. The scripture said she had five husbands and currently cohabiting with a man. Wow. You know, when I first read this uh, verse, I said, she must be beautiful. <laughs> Can you imagine that woman you are having a five husband and now you are living with another man? Hello man! <laughs> right? <laughs> wow, so she must be beautiful. She must be like compared to Elizabeth Taylor. You know Elizabeth Taylor? So she is beautiful. But we don't know what happened to the husbands. Are they alive? Or are they still alive? I mean, are they dead or still alive? No. But how come she had had five husbands? Okay. So five husbands. Wow. No. So in Jewish culture, okay, let's talk about the Jewish culture. In Jewish culture, um, only men are allowed to divorce their wives. No. Only men. And in that, you can either be divorced by, uh, okay, sexual transgressions, or by any other reason. You know, maybe your wife, you're, you're not a good cook, the husband is not pleased with you. Oh my, let's get divorced. <laughs> okay? So only man in Jewish culture. But on the other side, if only men had the right to divorce their wives, what should we think about as women? Yes, we will be hurt. Yes. No? We will be, we can like, but rejected. No? We will be disappointed. No? We will be in bitterness. We will be in, you know, like, kind of like feel unworthy. Yes. We feel like we have no value. Fine, man, rejected you. No? Wow, I, I, I know some women, only one husband, and they were left, they were gone. Oh man, you would see that woman, how devastated she is. How, how she was hurt. But five husbands? Okay, so she is beautiful, but she is broken. No, like a broken vessel. She's broken. She suffers low self-esteem, hurting, depressed, unloved, lonely, polite, unworthy. It's fighting against all odds of shame. 
she came to throw water on the sixth hour. Six hour by the Jewish time, it's 12 o'clock noon. Who, woman in her right thinking, will come to the well in the desert, in the middle of the desert, will come to draw water. If you go in the Philippines and it's summer, and you go out and, and, and at 12 o'clock, you felt like you were being toasted. <laughs> no? How much more in, in, in Israel, in the desert, in the Middle East? I was once working in Dubai, you know, and it was summer. I just go out just to hang clothes. Oh my, I felt the sweat all coming over me in just for five minutes. So this woman, there must be a reason why she had to throw water in the sixth hour, in the twelfth noon, where other peoples are hiding. Why? Well, if you are the woman in Samaria, and the, and the, the scripture says he, she is the woman in Samaria, she must be famous. I mean, famous in another way. No? So she, she was ashamed. She was lonely. And she doesn't want to be seen by other people. Because no one will throw water in the 12th hour. Amen? Amen. Wow. So this is the woman of Samaria. But what can we say about the woman of Samaria? As the conversation goes on, well, we know she is polite. For me, I guess she is polite because here comes Jesus asking him, "Give me a drink." You no, know, and, and and Jesus talk about him of the living water, and and she said, "No." When Jesus said, "I can give you living water," you no, know, and and this woman said, "Sir." Sir, give me this water. You can see her needs. She has some needs. No, give me this water that I may not come to the thirst again and never weigh myself day after day on the 12th hour. No, hoping that no one will see me. Hoping that no one will ridicule at my situation. No, she has some needs. She also a believer, as we have read in the scripture. She is a worshiper. In verse 19:20, for he know she said, "No, I know you. You said that you know we must worship in the Jerusalem, but we we worship here in the mountain." And she said, she has hope. No, when she said, "I know that Messiah is." coming. She has hope. So this woman, even though she was hurt, even though she was rejected, even though she was felt nothing, she is, she has hope. She has hope that one day her Messiah is coming. And what about Jesus? What Jesus is doing in the well, we know it was Jesus, it was his intention not to go to Samaria. And he sat down by the well. Do you see the pictures in here? How wonderful it is for God that he knows a place where he can meet you. Yes. At the very point of your needs. So it's a wonderful picture. You know? Why, why is the well? What's so special about the well? Yes, both of them were thirsty. Jesus is thirsty. I mean, he is in the flesh. He is 100% God and same as 100% man. You know, as a man, you've got thirst. This woman is also has a thirst. You know? Both of them, they were thirsty. But when the Lord spoke about no, the living water that will become a fountain of springs in your life that you will never thirst again. That is something 
beyond physical needs. Amen. That is much more of a human you know, emotion, the needs of a man that no earthly things could satisfy. Amen? So both of them come to truth. And we know that Jesus said, you know, the time will come that the true worshiper will seek the Father in spirit and in truth. Now Jesus is longing for those true worshipers. The Samaritan woman is longing for tears you know, for water that will satisfy her. No? Amen? Amen? Okay. So, the well. You know, there are so many wonderful stories in the Bible in the Old Testament at the well. No? We know that Isaac and Rebecca, no? They love, they, their love at first sight begins at the well. Right? No? Rebecca's coming and Isaac was there waiting. No? No? Isaac came from the way of Bir Lahai Roy. It's meaning well of the living one that sees me. And it is in the desert. Now in Genesis 24, 62, 65. Jacob and Rachel in Genesis 29, verse 1 to 7. You know, they also met at the well. Moses and Zipporah in Exodus chapter 2, verse 16 to 21. They are also met each other in the world. Both Jacob and Moses, they were thirsty. No, and here come the girls, the women. They are came to draw water. No? And now in the Old Testament, I think that's the only one story in the New Testament that talk about the well. And this time, it is with Jesus. Wow. Amen? So, they said, oh, coincidence. No, there's no coincidence in the Bible. There's no coincidence when we're talking about our God. Everything is planned. Everything is a purpose. Everything has a plan and a purpose, no? Amen. There's no coincidence. Amen? Amen. God for you. He's the one who first sat at the world and waiting for the women. No? <sighs> okay? No, yes, right. <laughs> Jesus says, Act well. He came to meet our needs. Jesus sat at the well. He is waiting for us to come to him. And Jesus speaks to us and offers us the gift of God that He is the living water. Wow. He speaks the truth and He makes Himself known to us personally. Remember, God, Jesus, reveals Himself. You know, when the woman said, I know that Messiah is coming, Jesus Himself, I, the one who speaks, am He. Right? You know, when, when it is time for you to meet and to know God, He will come to you personally. You know, he will come to you personally. That's how precious you are in the eyes of God. Amen? Amen. No, and when you come to Him, He will not cast you out. Now, he's not a respecter of person, the Bible said. I mean, look, he's just a Samaritan. He is a Jew. There's a, a racial some discrimination. Aside from that, she is a woman. He is the man. No? And this one, she is what? She's living a life that is not in the eyes of God is wrong. Having an adulterous life, having a fornication in her life. But nevertheless, Jesus did not look at her the way the world sees her. Amen. 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 Yes. You know? We're in at the end of our lives. 
There is no one who can look at us, and there is no one where we can stand, only in the eyes of God. Amen? So Jesus looked at her. He doesn't even look at her. He even asked for a dream. He even asked and told him, I have a gift for you. So this woman said, Sir, please give me this drink. No. Had five husbands. This woman is looking for something that will fulfill her desires, her emptiness. Five husbands. You know, this could be something in our lives that we have been hanging out with. That we think that, okay, husband number one, uh, maybe our job will give us fulfillment. You know? Husband number two, maybe our relationship you know, will, will give us fulfillment. Okay, husband number three, you know, maybe our pursuit of success will give us and will satisfy us. No, husband number four, you name it. I don't know what's going on with your life. You, you might have been with this kind of doing or something in your life that you think that it will give you satisfaction, that it will fulfill you. But the fact that you have all this and you have five things in your life or more, that still leaves you empty, hunted. No? But Jesus came. He came to meet your needs. Amen. All you have to do is to go and draw that water. Not from the well, but from the well maker himself, the one who gave us the fountain of spring of living water. No? Amen? Amen. Amen. You are so quiet. <laughs> no? The Bible warned us, you know, when he said, like, no, my people have committed to evils in Jeremiah 2 13. They have forsaken me. The fountain of living waters and whom themselves cisterns, a broken cistern that cannot hold water. You know, our own effort, everything that we do, to think that it will only satisfy us, that to think that it will give us fulfillment in our lives, it will all come to nothing, it will be all come to empty. You know? The Bible warned, Bible warned us we can carry nothing in this world. Yes. Naked we came from mother's womb, naked we shall depart from yes. this world. Yes. Flesh and blood will not enter the kingdom of God, but only those who are in spirit. Yes. No. And God is willing and is waiting for you to give Him His life. Is living water to you for you to drink. No? So what happened? Even though she was broken, so what happened after that? After her encounter with Jesus, she left her water pot, went to the city, and tell and share to everyone he sees. That she found that she find, found the Messiah. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen. Yes. And she found the Messiah. No? Have you ever heard of wonderful stories how lives have changed because of encounter with Jesus? Yes. No? At first she was so ashamed. But then after that, she doesn't care what people look at her. And she's not so selfish to keep that experience that she found the Messiah. She went to the village and shared it to people. You know? From shame, from being nobody to somebody. Hallelujah. You know? 
Only God can do that. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. Huh? Promotion only comes from God, not from men. Amen. And so if you think you are unworthy, I mean, we are unworthy because we are sinners, but Christ offered forgiveness that we may become worthy. We are just an earthly clay. But God is willing to fill up with treasures. Yeah? The treasure inside this jar of clay. No, don't, don't let your past stop you from going and to come near to God. No? And don't seek any other thing that you would think that will give you satisfaction. Yes. You may be clinging into some kind of a relationship or you may be clinging into someone that you think that <coughs> no, this one is the one that truly can make me happy. Make my life complete. No? Come to the world. Jesus is waiting. You don't need to draw out the water from the deep well. He himself will give it to you. And his promise, you will never be thirsty again. You will never be thirsty again. You know? Gosh. <laughs> Leave me. If you're looking for true love, and if you are looking for your perfect mate, no, that you've been trying to be hanging out with anyone that comes along in your life. No, he, he's not the one. No. I'm sorry, am I only speaking to women right now? <laughs> no, but I think men are the same too. No. I mean, men could be promiscuous. No, they are trying to look for. Oh man, I want to meet my. If woman has a Mr. Right, then I am happy to have my uh, Miss Right. No? <laughs> but it's usually you think the one is right is wrong. No. The scripture says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. You can never be wrong when God has made his perfect choice for you. Amen. God is never too late, nor He is never early. He always comes in a perfect time. You know, like I, I remember last time, yes, I shared some of, part of my testimony to you. You know, and yeah, I, you know, everything that I would say sometimes it's so personal to me, it's always been personal to me. Because in all those times that I have seen God's way of His love, no? 
Woman has five, five has five, nine, nine, you know. I have, not, I only have one husband. Of course, it, you can only be a loved one husband in the Philippines. Because there's no divorce. No? But men, when women are lonely, you're looking for someone to feel your emptiness in your life. You know, like this woman in Samaria. You know, I have been in there, that kind of life, looking for someone. You know? Oh my. I have been told before by my friend, you know, Lenny, only Jesus can satisfy you. Amen. I was in college at the time. You know? And I still look for someone. You know? I had a fail, what we said, a failure of marriage. No? But, as the woman of Samaria, she has hope. I have hope. No? Men may destroy you, everything in your life. No? Happy Women's Day. <laughs> but let me tell you something. Man may destroy. Okay? And what man destroys, only God can restore. Yeah. <laughs> she was restored from shame. No, from nothing to something, to someone, to somebody. No, from, from ashes. No, to life. No, from the lowest level to the highest level. Only God can do that in your life. No. So this man, we thought that, this woman, we thought that she is useless. But God, you know, the scripture says, God chose those foolish things of this world, the weakest things of this world, that he may show his power and his wisdom. Yes. Yes. Amen? Yes. You are beautiful. Yes. No? <laughs> Women, as fathers, approval first. Yes, amen. No? Amen. amen. Who? Hallelujah. Amen. When only Jesus love satisfies, restores, and transforms our brokenness a useful vessel filled with love that overflows by turning the well into a fountain of water springing up to everlasting life. Your mess turns into a message. Your test into a testimony. No? And by the way, when our life ends in this world, when we are, you no, know, of course everyone will be dead, right? We are looking forward to that. Amen. No absence in the body sets presence with the Lord. That's right. No. And in the end, there's only one husband that we will have, and that is Jesus. Amen. No. In Isaiah 54, 5, it says, "No, your Maker is your husband." Amen. Amen. Ah, so that's why the Lord says, you know, a fountain of living water up to eternal life. Amen. Amen. Do not know your brokenness. No matter how many leaks coming out from your lights, 
God's willing to punch up those legs in your lives. Amen. Amen. Whoever drinks of the water that I shall keep him will never thirst, but the water that I shall keep him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. Will you be like this Samaritan woman who said, Sir, give me this water. Would you want to drink this water with Jesus? No, I, I may not ask you to come here in the front. No, because we know God can see you. God can see and knows your heart. Yes. Hmm? 